And uh, what do you have to say about this quote from Joseph Jackson QC? My name is Stan Dugbe, and as always, it is a pleasure to come your way on Weasel TV Insights. An hour of conversation, very interesting conversations on socioeconomic issues, lifestyle, professional, family values, national issues that impact on us all and more. We are trying to situate the issues in a national conversation that every viewer can identify with and contribute. Tonight, our guest and I will have a conversation on the law and divorce. As we have been discussing over the last few editions of the program, people get married. They are filled with lots of expectations and with the hope that the relationship or union will last a lifetime. It is also abundantly clear that maintaining a relationship is not that easy. It is fraught with its own difficulties. In some circumstances, problems can occur that simply make it impossible for the marriage to continue. Making the decision to leave a marriage is scary for some. There are others who will find it very easy to move out over just any issue, even if it can be resolved. There's often a deep fear of being alone, not to mention the possibility of an unknown future. Unfortunately, in our part of the world, people can also be forced to stay in an unhappy and even abusive marriage, lest they risk being called failures by society. What is the point in staying in a marriage which no longer serves its purpose? I have always asked. This is not in any way endorsing divorce. People must not be made to risk their lives and their happiness at the expense of another. But when you want to get out of an unhappy marriage, how do you go about it? How are issues about property sharing, child support, and custody, etc., best handled and according to the law? That's our conversation topic with Stan Dube tonight. I will introduce my guest and get into the conversation after these messages. Embarrassed. Too embarrassed to speak to a loved one. Too embarrassed to speak to your doctor. Too embarrassed when in our lifetime one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle, or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey, Dad, have you had your prostate checked out? See, how hard is that? It's easy. Just start the conversation. Prostate cancer is survivable if caught and treated early enough. Don't let embarrassment stop you having this important conversation. You may save someone's life, not just your own. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boca Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the clicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our Panthers out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazer TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka, and I would be your host. Your flight is ready to leave. Sit back and relax and enjoy the flight.
Thank you for staying with us on Weasel TV. Join us in the conversation about divorce and the law. Are you contemplating leaving your marriage? Wait until you finish listening to my friend, my senior brother, and my legal counsel, Francis Kwati Atta Esquire. Is it Esquire? I don't know what he's saying. It's Esquire. Esquire. Uh, Esquire. Francis is my friend of many years, a lawyer with Ari Solomon Consulting. And he has been in the middle of a number of marriage dissolution cases. He will be sharing thoughts with us on the law and from his experiences in the court. Counsel, good evening. Good evening. And, uh, and welcome to, to the program. I am, I'm humbled. Good, good, good. I, 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 I don't know. I mean, you are wearing blue because of your Chelsea things. I should have... I should have won something that reflected my team, Yingo FC of Dabala. Um, so, but my blue is deeper, so I hope you don't have any thoughts that it has anything to do with your... Is your team still doing well at all? Well, Chelsea is still Chelsea. In fact, you can ask uh, my good friend, Obi. She knows that uh, Chelsea is on top, regardless of um, whatever is happening in Europe. And it's, uh, you, you have no owners at the moment, right? Oh, we don't need to have owners. We are a traditional club. Um, you understand? Yes, we belong to the English. We belong to the English. At least a rich, a rich, um, <clears throat> rich Ghanaian, we are told, is getting ready to... to but uh, if tomorrow the Black Stars is playing. Um, you, you, you are a great fan of the Black Stars. I, I can't speak for myself. Uh, is it looking good? Really and truly, I used to be a great fan of the Black Stars until some few events. Then... Um, the love went away, oh, but, so, uh, so you're also gone. With the with the with the arrival of uh, this new coach, I I think uh, from what I saw happened. Do you have a coach? I thought the, he's a, the, I thought the, he's a caretaker coach. He is a caretaker coach, and I am actually hoping that the GFA will see wisdom in maintaining him because of his style and his attitude. You, you, you can have one on one you, game, no style and no, attitude. You, you, like, no, you can see that all the players are gravitating towards him <laughs> as against uh, the previous ones. And uh, as far as tomorrow's match is concerned, all I can say is I wish them well. You know, fo football has a mind of its own. You can't predict. And uh, as far as uh, Nigeria is also concerned, I, I wish them well. Uh, they, they, they can do all the bragging, they can do all the talking, but then. Uh, as we say in our local palace, Agronifo. Agronifo. Anyway, we wish the Black Stars well in their game against uh, the Super Eagles of Nigeria tomorrow at uh, 5 p.m. And you sure uh, know that Wizard TV will bring you that match live as always. And uh, we, 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 are, we are clearly one of the, the leaders in the live sports broadcasts as far as the national team and other Ghanaian teams are concerned. So. Uh, join us tomorrow. But let, let, let's get to why we are here today, the law and divorce. We've been having some very interesting conversations about it, uh, about divorce and what happens and all that. But who can initiate a divorce proceeding? Once again, thanks for having me. Uh, as far as the law is concerned, that is the Matrimonial Causes Act of 1970, Act 367, Section 1 clearly spells it out that a petition for divorce may be presented to the court by either party to a marriage. So either of the spouses can present a petition for divorce to the courts. I, 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 I've been reading the Matrimonial Causes Act and uh, uh, quite a number of very interesting things. And I mean, right, right at, the, at, at the top of it, section two tells you proof of breakdown of marriage. You know, yes. and what you have to do, and, and, and all that, you know, what the respondent must do, and also it means that it's not just waking up and saying that I want to divorce. You need to get a lawyer who would understand, you know, you and what you want, really want to do. But I, I, I want to stay a little legal for, for the next 20 or so minutes of, of, of this conversation. But you are free to send me your, your, your messages. The WhatsApp number is 055 269 7939. 055 Two six nine seven nine three nine. If you have any questions for the lawyer, if you are seeking divorce or you've already, you know, gone through a divorce proceedings and you have any stories to share with us, you are welcome to send them. You can also email us at TV at wizardgroup.com. So, counsel, what are the legal grounds for divorce? 
Before I get into the legal grounds, I, I mentioned earlier, referred to Section 1 1 of the Matrimonial Causes Act that uh, any of the parties to the marriage can bring uh, competition the court yes. for divorce. But then again, there is another caveat when you go to Section 9. The caveat is the restriction on divorce within two years of the date of marriage, you know. Unless and until your marriage is two years old, you are not allowed, you are not permitted by the law to run to the courts to petition, to petition the court for divorce. So, no. so, so, so we, we get married, we begin to have issues or something may have happened, there's whatever, uh, irreconcilable differences or something, adultery or whatever. Until it is two years, you can't go to the court to seek divorce. Intention, you, I mean, you don't know. You just get into the marriage as soon as there is one or two issues you want to opt out. You want out. to opt out. Yes, when you when you get in, you will have to remain and leave it, live through it. So that is the caveat that Section Nine poses to. So, uh, so, so I, 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 I want to understand it. So, if I feel strongly that this marriage i cannot be in it and the two years is not up what what options are open to me the options open to you first and foremost is that the family will have to be involved to try to talk to both parties to see so when you look when you go to section 2f section 2 1f the 1f states if it's your permission if i can mm -hmm. reset that the parties to the marriage have after diligent effort been unable to reconcile their differences then based on this one you now go if the marriage is under two years you go to the court for a special license before you can because that why we have a marriage that we are we have entered and we are we are saying that we don't want to come and continue again we have to now go and be collecting license before we even you know dissolve it yes what i want uh, yourself and your uh, viewers to understand is that marriage is a very sacred institution you don't just enter into marriage and you don't just walk out of marriage that is why you, when you are before you get into marriage you are required to go through counseling so all some of these issues will be amplified at the, during the counselor se section again um you also can't enter marriage and just walk out no it is not done. Even if it is customary marriage, you can't just say, hey, mom finds an uncle. You have to go through certain procedures. Procedure it must be that the families, the, the families of both parties, and you know, the, in our settings, marriage is not just between um, Mr. A and Madam B, but marriage is also between the family of Mr. A and the family of Mr. B. Okay, so when the two of you are joined together in holy matrimony or customarily and you based on one or two reasons you want to opt out yes the family must get involved they, they witnessed the celebration of the marriage so they have to get involved in the divorce so uh, that is that that is for you now when it comes to the reasons why you reasons why we divorce you go to section two and then section two of the matrimonial causes act clearly spells it out you say for the purposes of showing that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation okay now before i get here let me go to section one two one two said says the sole ground for granting a petition for divorce shall be that the marriage has broken down beyond reconciliation is it not the case that once one party always decides that they want to go in for a divorce they believe that the marriage has broken down I mean, what, 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 what else must one, or how, how must one show to the court that the marriage has indeed broken down irreconcilably? So you have to come on the, uh, one of the six grounds that you have in section 2.1. So the first one is uh, that uh, you have the, your spouse mm -hmm. has committed adultery. There is, uh, the next one is... Um, the respondent has behaved in such a way that the petitioner cannot reasonably be be expected to live with the person the third one the respondent has deserted the petitioner the fourth one the parties to the marriage have not lived as man and wife for a continuous period of two years and the fifth one 
for a continuous they have not lived together as man and wife for a continuous period for five years then the final one that the parties to the marriage have after diligent effort been unable to reconcile their differences so whatever differences the first five poses the final one is saying that after diligent efforts from between yourselves uh, friends, family relations, uh, I mean, pastors, tried. whoever, they've good. tried and you can't reconcile your differences. I, I have a follow-up question to that, but I want you to, to um, help us understand this first so that I can flow it in. Take us through, how does one commence a divorce petition against a spouse, against a partner? So, per the law, when you go to um, the CI 47, which regulates the procedure, as, uh, and on the other 65, it spells out how the petition, how the divorce petition is commenced. So one of the spouse, one of the spouse who actually in, is eager to, to to opt out of the marriage will have to consult a lawyer. The lawyer will advise you on. I mean, everything will be checked. Then, at the end of the day. They will file a divorce petition. They will petition the courts. And the courts will then serve the respondent. Okay, and by the rules of engagement, the respondent will have to enter appearance. After which he has some number of days to file his response. And when you come to section two, three, you see the courts will not automatically grant grant the divorce petition. The divorce. You will have to convince them. Okay, so if uh, I may read to the hearing of your lis listeners, he said, uh, Section 2 2 of the matrimonial court, it says, On a petition for divorce, it shall be the duty of the court to inquire so far as is reasonable into the facts alleged by the petitioner and the respondent. Is it, is it the case that the law is formulated or grounded in a way to discourage? dissolution of marriages because all the all the processes that you are putting up yes it may be some checks and balances but it's as though to say that look first point go and uh, resolve your issues or try to like you said family and all that before you even come before before the court so the f states that that the parties to the marriage have after diligent effort been unable to reconcile their differences the efforts for you to reconcile includes the court the, when you file the divorce, the judges also, I mean, the court have a duty to make sure that, look, the court will even make, make attend. I've been involved in situations where the court have referred the parties to counsel. The counselor. Mm -hmm. You understand? And taking the report of the counsel, the, the, the counselor before they proceed. Before they proceed. So that it is not as if. Indeed, indeed th these people, they can't. They just can't make it, so yeah, let, let's go. Yeah, 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 okay. So it is not as if as soon as the uh, petition is filed in the court, the court will grant it and off, mm -hmm. off you go. No. What, 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 I mean, are there situations where, you know, um, a divorce petition has been filed and the other partner, that was a follow-up question I wanted to ask you when you were speaking, that. the other partner uh, comes to the court and opposes the 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 petition or the grounds, oh, yes, the yes, grounds for, yes, for, yes, for yes, a divorce. Yes, yes. Yeah, the, the, there are instances, for instance, when uh, the petitioner, if, let's say the petitioner is the wife, files on the ground of unreasonable behavior. The unreasonable behavior is uh, an allegation against the man. Now, the man can file a defense and tell the court that this grounds that my wife because unless and until the court has granted the divorce, you are still his wife. So the, he, he, he will tell the court, this grounds that my wife has stated or enumerated, this doesn't amount to unreasonable behavior. And the court will look into it and also come, with, come out with a ruling. Really is, is, isn't that a case that in those instances, the, the other partner obviously is seeking, as a matter of public record, to refute the accusations or allegations or cases being made against him or her as grounds for the for instance if you're accused of adultery which is the basis of of, of the of the of the divorce petition you you would want to come to court not necessarily because you are against the divorce but just to maintain your name and that no i i'm, I'm opposed to the grounds 
uh, for which you are, she has filed, he or she has filed the petition, the accusation, which, which, yeah. which is which is adultery. Mm. Is that is that often the case, or it's really a case where the other partners just think that I really want to remain in this relationship, I don't want a divorce, so uh, the court should strike out the petition. In some instances, yes, the respondent will still tell the court that go ahead and grant the divorce. I also, I mean, they will cross petition that they also want the divorce, but they want to explain their side of the story that whatever you are, the allegation or the complaint, the, the accusation you are leveling against them is not as it is. For instance, when you accuse someone of adultery, the courts in Ghana have, have said over time that it is very difficult to prove adultery. Yeah. It is very very, very, very it, it is very very difficult to prove adultery could unless of course video evidence or how unless of course you <laughs> or unless of course there are instances where you say yes my husband has committed adultery with Madame B and then it is proven that Madame B is pregnant for your husband then it is obvious. So 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 if your spouse refuses to acknowledge, you know your your divorce petition. Um, when being served or and all that, what 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 would be the likely outcome? Or what what else can you do? The question is not very clear. How do you mean if they refuse? No, so to so it? for instance, I, I I have served, I've I've served a divorce petition on on, uh, or I want to serve a divorce petition on my wife. That's right. And I'm not finding her, or oh, she's she's evading she's service. evading service yes. or whatever. What, what 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 do you do? Well, uh, there are there are so many the the rules of court as the CI forty seven provides how you can go around it. So, and the, with the divorce petition, you are required to serve the respondent personally. It's personal service. Okay, so if you know his or her address, you provide that to the courts. At times, you have to direct service. You have to direct the belief as to where you know they can find the person at uh, what time. And there are so many ways we do. You can leave it with uh, somebody who is an adult in the office, a colleague, the secretary, or whoever, just so that they bring the petition, the petition to his attention. His attention. Yeah. And if, if you are able to file, if the uh, belief is able to prove service, the case will go on. Whether or not, you, or not. Yes. You, you, you spoke about um, a number of grounds for divorce, you know, desertion, the spouse is not there for a while. But some, some messages are coming in and they are quite practical, so I want us to use that to, to explain the issues. The number to send your messages to is 055-269-7939. That's our WhatsApp line. And you can also email us at wizardtv at wizardgroup.com. Um, this one says that, good evening, uh, please, uh, my question for lawyer, um, I'm married for three years, but no legal documents were signed. Now, the man says, I want to kill him. And for four months now, the man is not talking to me, but we live in the same house. Can I take legal action? Yes, she can take legal action. She can take legal action to the extent that she needs to convince herself whether the marriage has actually come to an end or is coming to an end. And I, what does she mean by there are no documents covering the marriage? Is it that the marriage is customary? Yeah. customary I, I don't know, probably. Is so, there, are no, there are no legal documents. So, so let's it assume... It means that probably they, 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 didn't, they didn't sign... Well, so let's else. assume that it's a customary marriage. Then uh, we'll then go straight to Section 41 of the Matrimonial Causes mm -hmm. Act. Now, Section 41.1 says that this act shall apply to all monogamous marriages. That is Section 1. one. Monogamous marriages. Monogamous marriages. That okay. is what we know as the wedding. wedding. We go to church to sign. But then when it comes to two, we say... On application by a party to a marriage other than the monogamous marriage, the court shall apply the provisions of this act to that marriage, and in so doing, subject to the requirement of justice, equity, and good conscience, the court may have regard to the peculiar incidents of that marriage. So the court will go ahead. Right. So it is not only monogamous marriage that you can file the divorce. divorce. Okay. Customary marriage, marriage Mohammedan marriage, you can still file a divorce, and the court will hear you. And your situation will be looked into. Apart from applying the common law, common law. they will look at your personal law. Your so, personal so, law is so, your customary law. So in this law. case, what, what you are being told is that if you feel that the marriage is collapsing or is down because the or man is dying, the man or is dying, the man you have not seen the man for you have not spoken to the man for four um, four months, even though you are in the same house and he's 
accusing you of you know wanting to kill him and all that so the options are there it means even though you are not married you know uh is it by ordinance that's by like ordinance, much ordinance monogamous marriage, monogamous marriage. Mm. you you can still you, you can, can still, still petition, petition the court yes the court will hear going for a divorce mm. dominic Champon from uh, jesse kumasi says please can one divorce legally upon real upon realizing the blood group Upon releasing of blood group on a partner, Dominic, you may you may want to send the 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 question again because I don't I don't I don't think that even lawyer gets the point. Yanya Ko from Kufuridua says that hello Stan, please I wish to find out from the lawyer if I can file for divorce in the case that a husband denies a wife sex for three years. Ah, one year cry usually file. <laughs> This why I mean if lawyer says that the, if lawyer quotes on that on that twenty four in session two one two, I'll disagree with him. So when you come to um, <laughs> in in, the, in this particular instance, denial of sex. Denial of sex, yes. Okay, what are the circumstances? You see, the court will always want to take each case. What circumstances again? He has denied me sex for three years. What circumstances again? No, you denying you sex. Is it the case that the man is sick? If the man was sick, he would have should have said that the man is sick. I am denying only sex means that the man is able-bodied and, and all good and all, and denying sex. Yeah, so on the, that section you can, yes, the, you, you, you can come uh, on the, I think, um, section 2-1-C. That is constructive dis desertion. Desertion, okay. That the respondent has deserted the petitioner for a continuous period of at least two years immediately present, uh, preceding the petition presentation of the petition so you are in the house i mean you are living with the person but you are not living like husband and wife, wife. he's not doing so he, it's, it's, he or she is not doing what what he or she is supposed to do. to do yes because sex is part of marital life the, the, and when when you intentionally deny the other party that is cruelty so you can go you can come under unreasonable behavior and desertion, yes, please. Okay. Um, I've been married for four years, and my wife has committed adultery, and she wants to dissolve the marriage. She has left the home for one year now and has taken the case to court to divorce. But we went to the court the first time, and the second time, the third time. She didn't come to the court again. So please what can i do the yes like I, I i said earlier on when the petitioner petitions for divorce the respondent can also cross petition for divorce mm -hmm. and go ahead and state the reasons but how, so, how do you how do you commit adultery and then you file for divorce and then you end up running away from from your, your own divorce so petition. she has abandoned her case, her case yes. she filed for divorce and she has abandoned yes. her case so he can but, now go but you the man also cross petition for divorce. divorce so if the woman has abandoned her case you can go ahead with your own cross petition okay because your cross petition is also a petition on its own so <laughs> they, yes you can you can pursue your case and is, is, is this something that happens regularly where some people file for the divorce and maybe have cold feet and just you know feel like uh, should i go ahead with this uh, maybe i should not and then abandon the process yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean it, it happens for for instance a petitioner can after some time after some time of filing the petition decides that oh i made a mistake then in fact, the petitioner, he or she can come and announce to the court that, look, the, petition, the initial petition I filed is a mistake. I've realized it's a mistake. I want to redraw the petition and see if I can reconcile. And no, the court is always for reconciliation. The court is not, je not just there to dissolve marriages. No. The courts are enjoined to make sure that they interrogate the issues. They inquire into it. So it is easier for them if the petitioner comes and says that i no longer want to go ahead with the petition okay. and i want to uh, reconcile with my wife i want to reconcile with my husband i mean the court the court will always give you the opportunity to go and try and come back yes we'll take two more questions and then um uh we'll, we'll take a break and come back um kobe miles from aquitia says good evening my question to uh, lawyer Quartin is when can one be able to remarry after divorce 
This question, this question is very vague. Well, if, if, one, if, see, if, if the divorce is granted, once the divorce is granted, granted, you can marry tomorrow. You can marry the next hour. In fact, you are free. You are free man. Except that. So let me let me let me be uh, let me let me be a little uh, naughty. If if the one who put in the divorce petition and it is granted marries a day after or shortly after it means that he or she has obviously been contemplating this marriage which is the reason why he or she raised the issues and went in for the divorce is he is he on that on that note let me say that um you are entitled to your views and opinions the person is involved in the marriage institution and in the union due to happenings he decides that the, he or she rightly petitions the court and the court has granted the final order the order absolute that the marriage is dissolved it's a free man now i mean whilst i was preparing for this i read a case in which a, a, a lawyer who was handling a, a case <laughs> handling a case for for a lady a lady lawyer who was handling a case for a lady uh, after the divorce proceedings <laughs> married the man in question six months after that uh, well, we, 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 live, we live in a very strange world, you see. <laughs> and I'm told the woman is, I mean, I think the, yeah, the woman went to the GLC or something because trying to raise issues about it. But let, let's take that question. The, the question about the remarry, he, he says another one and says, Ma, Kobe Ma says again that, uh, please, my question, what if I am out of the country and remarry? Does the law still remain the same? Out of which In other country? words, he, he is he, married in Ghana. Ghana, and then he's gone out somewhere to go and remarry you can't marry that, that, it's still it's still bigger right? it's, still, it's still bigger yes in fact the law of the country that you are going to remarry will not even permit you to marry to, to marry because if you are going if you are filling the forms to marry they will ask you there are sections where you have to declare whether you are you are married or not and you know at the tail end you have to swear that to the best of your knowledge whatever information you are providing is true so if you are found out to be lying you have actually married in your yeah, country, country of origin then you that, are that's now another matter. this is, I, is, is I, another I, matter I, I may not be able to uh, uh, tackle the legal questions that i have for you about child support uh, you know taking of custody and others you know I, I want to go for a break but let's take this one from bismarck uh, good evening mr dobe i've been in a relationship with a lady for more than three years and even has a child though we are not married i have lost the love and the interest in getting married to her due to the fact that i don't enjoy sex with her and she also knows now i want to walk out what is the way out for me so not married yeah, no he no. says he's in a relationship yes. what's the nature of the relationship well they are not married so it's an unmarried relationship you see customarily yeah, customary, we, customary marriage is, mm. is, is is something we need to explain to your viewers or viewers listeners. And people to know. You understand? <laughs> because marriage is not only when you have gone to. The marriage is between you and the woman. woman. It's between the man and the woman. The woman and the man. Okay. So when the two of you agree, and in some instances, even if even your parents don't agree, but you are seen together as social functions, you are presumed to be customary, customary married. Married. Okay, so he needs to come again. With, and, and, he needs to come again with, 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 with the question. And find out you, you have been in a relationship out of this. Yes, you have been in a relationship with the lady for three years, and even have a child. you even have a child. You understand? Which presupposes that you are living under the same roof, roof. as husband and wife. That is how your neighbors see you. You are actually married, customarily. You are watching Weasel TV Insights. My name is Stan Dobe. My guest this evening, Francis Quartin Arthur, uh, is a legal practitioner with Aru Solomon Consulting. And we are discussing the law and divorce. Very interesting uh, uh, issues coming up. Learning a lot, you know, about, about divorce and what the law says about marriage, what we can do and how we can go about it. So if you have any questions, send them to us uh, via email or via WhatsApp and we would we'll, we'll answer them properly for you. And um, when we come back, we'll continue the conversation, we'll read your messages and take your questions. My name is Stan The world is a dark and dangerous place. Why live in darkness find the light?
or we can be the generation that ends it for good. Malaria must die so millions can live. From the Lenclay Sports Stadium to the Santiago Bernabeu, from the Boca Marina to the Madison Square Gardens, we would make sure that you do not miss out on all the scoop, the kicks, and all the flicks in the world of sports, from association football to boxing to hockey to tennis. We make sure that we bring the action to you right in your home. And for our punters out there as well, we have something very special for you in the Investors Corner. Join me on Wazer TV every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. for Ghana's number one sports post-mortem show, The Arena. My name is Kosi Fiaka and I would be your host. We will, we will rock you. <laughs> Welcome back to the show and uh, this is Wizard TV Insights. You know, the, we're reading a number of messages and uh, I'm sorry but there are some of the messages that are not appropriate for for today's topic, we'll, we'll consider it some other time. You know, my promo talks about discussing sex, and that time would come. There's an evening I'm going to discuss sex, and it may be a monologue, you know, because there are so many things that we can, we can talk about. So please keep those messages. When that time comes, let's, let's deal with it. Uh, today, I'm having a conversation with Francis Quartin Atta, private legal practitioner with Iro Solomon Consulting, and uh, he's taking us through the law and divorce and um, as I said before we went on a break there there are so many things issues that I've lined up to to discuss but I, I obviously can't you know ignore your your questions and your queries so I'll take a few more uh, of them um, Gifty from Kumase says please someone wants to marry me he is a divorcee but the divorce has not been granted yet by the court can I marry the man with the case still at the court? Then the is it's not a divorcee. That's, yeah, that's what I thought. The, the, the man is, is seeking a divorce, but he, he, he it has not been granted. It's in the process. So if the man makes a mistake and marries the lady, the man has committed a criminal offense. That is the big bigamy. So the wife who is in court with the man can report the man to the authorities and the man can be picked up. So, so you don't have to do that. Yes, a, because, a friend, because a, like a, I said... A lady friend of mine just sent me a message with uh, happy emojis and says that, yippee, we are going to marry. She just had a divorce. So I think your response tells her that she can marry anytime soon. So she... Oh, she, once, <laughs> once the court grants the default <laughs> divorce, you are free. You are free person. you are free radical. Hey, you are free. You are, you are free. You, you are know, free, so yes. You can go and bond do, anywhere. Do, do what you want to do. Uh, Good evening. Kindly ask a lawyer if a party to a divorce, the petitioner um, case, petitioner's case can be represented by another person other than a lawyer. Yes. If I understand the question very well, does it mean that you want to present your case without it, without the services of a lawyer? You yeah, want, sure, to, sure, you want sure to represent asking, yourself. Yeah, rep oh, yes, you are allowed yeah. to. You are allowed to represent yourself. It depends on the court. You know, we have the magistrate court, the circuit court, and the high court. It may be too technical for you. Mm -hmm. The procedure. I, I think the circuit and the high court, but at the magistrate court, we go to court every day. You see parties representing themselves. So there's there's no much fuss about that one. About, about that. Okay. Yeah. Then. Um, Koshi Badohu um, says, if your partner is sent to prison for long years, can it be a ground for divorce? The law, the law says that if the person has deserted you, mm -hmm. okay, I want to read the desertion to mean that you don't, you don't know where the other spouse is. Mm -hmm. But in this particular instance, you know that he's in prison. Yes. Is it, is By the law, would the law, would the law, the, that, co the court will not accept that. That, as that will not amount as desertion. You have to bring another reason. Um, please, is there any legal action one can take against a service or organization that prevents married couples from staying together? That when one is due for okay, this is not about divorce. I'm sure we can we can tackle that on a, on a, on a, another time. Uh, my name is Faustina. I'm in a relationship with a married man. He wants to marry me, 
But I want to know, is there any law that the wife can stand on and prevent us from marrying bigamy? How can you marry? <laughs> you can't marry two women at the same time. But uh, unless my law is wrong. Well, you, you, are, you, are, you are getting there. The man cannot get married to the woman, to the, to the especially woman. if the, the, uh, his, the man's earlier marriage is monogamous. You understand? Okay. If, it's, if, if it's customary. If it is customary, which is potentially polygamous, he can pick other women. So why are we doing this monogamous to you, the customary one? Okay. <laughs> Gideon from the choir says, I want, to know, I want to know what are some of the determinants to be considered when it comes to divorce and compensation? Divorce and compensation. Well, well, uh, with the divorce, you, you know what I read from uh, uh, chapter eight of your yes, of your yes. of your big book yes. that divorce is now more about money. Yes, you know the financials yes. that it's, it's it's wage so, on the battleground. Of, so, of so money. He, he, he wants to know. I mean, Gideon is asking, what, what are the considerations? Uh, the considerations for divorce, you go to section two of the matrimonial courses act where it lists the it should be adultery on the part of your spouse it should be unreasonable behavior it should be desertion it should be separation and the final one is that all effort has been made and still the parties are not seen eye, eye to eye and under what circumstances can one ask for compensation in in in, in the divorce petition Okay, in a divorce pe petition, when it comes to the compensation or the financial settlement, I believe you need a whole, we need a whole section to handle that. But then to give you a gist of it, you see, when you go to Article 22, especially Article 22.3 of the 1992 Constitution, it states that um, spouses or parties to a marriage or properties acquired, Properties jointly acquired during the subsistence of the marriage must be distributed equitably among the parties on dissolution of the marriage. Okay, so if the property or if whatever you are seeking to have a share in it was acquired or was created, the business was created during the subsistence of the marriage and it is jointly acquired. So it must be jointly acquired. It must be jointly acquired. So, so, so that if my wife acquires a property and I do not contribute financially to the acquisition of that property, when I go seeking divorce, I cannot ask the court to share that property between us. So during the substance of the marriage, if your wife intends to acquire the property and she invents to you that she doesn't intend to own this particular property with you, she, she, has, she has a right to own her individual property. But in most cases, those conversations don't take place. Which is, which is why there is always this bickering about property, settlement. So when, you, so when you go back to, when you go back to the matrimonial courses, you notice that the court is enjoined to inquire into each circumstance. Okay, so the inquiry will encompass the property, the issues, that is the children everything holistic how the properties were acquired when were they acquired okay it used to be substantial contribution when we started i mean in the, in the Ghanaian uh, divorce jurisprudence it, it used to be substantial contribution by the other party okay so you notice that our fathers were the working ones and our mothers were mainly the housewives okay so in earlier cases our fathers were going away with all the properties. Then with time, the 1992 constitution came in and it started evolving. That we started looking at uh, equality is equity, where they, they were, the courts consider the contribution of the housewife, i.e. in taking, giving you emotional support, taking care of the kids, taking care of the household, cook, cooking for you and all that, for you to have the peace of mind to go and make money. Yeah. That is her it's contribution the because the that contribution cannot be quantified in monetary terms. Okay? And again, when you look at the first case, Mensa and Mensa, the 1979, it, it, it states that, I mean, uh, marital relation doesn't, doesn't go with the uh, uh, usual commerce where we, we keep records 
of how much I bought these goods and how much I'm selling and the profit and all that. We, 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 like you, you said, know. we would we, have yeah. to discuss. So when it, know, yes, when, when, when it comes com, to com, com, financial compensation, compensation and, and all that. You, you need the, a whole... The, 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 now, now says, uh, please, can legally, can legally married couples divorce without a court? Oh, yes, if they understand if they understand, if they understand, so, understand we, we don't have to go to court. We agree that we are we are we are, we are ending the talking. Yes. Um, Samora from Kwando. And before before you go ahead, you see, when you look at our system, the, the Matrimonial Courses Act, that's the first two issues that the the adultery mm -hmm. and the unreasonable the behavior. Down, yeah. That is where you notice that the party petitioning will have to find a fault. Okay, and in finding the fault or whatever fault you advertise to the court, the respondent will also bring his or her response to come and counter you. Now, what happens is that you notice that the, by the end of the day, the, the, there's so much antagonism between mm -hmm. the parties because of what they are, the cross uh, accusations here and there. And if there are issues involved, eventually it affects how the issues are, are raised because of the antagonism that has that has come about as a result of the formula. formula. You have to find fault at all costs. Now, it is very difficult for the, them to see eye to eye to even consider the interests of the kids when it comes to their schooling, their religion, their, 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 I mean, their health and all that. You know, when, when, even if the court grants you the divorce, the both spouses will still i mean both uh, former spouses will still have to come together, come together to take decisions regarding the health that is which health facility you should take the children, children to, to which school they should go which church they should worship you understand so i mean that's so you are, that's why, so, that's you why are, sometimes you are in, never you are never going to you are never going to have a clean break, break. if there are there are kids involved. Kids involved. Yeah. That's why sometimes you know when some people start the process, then they begin to you know uh, pull foot at, at at a certain at a certain point. Um, look, I, I I'm enjoying the 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 conversation. I'm mean, I'm enjoying the messages that are that are that are coming through. I I love that you are active you know participants in this conversation. And um, this is Wizard TV Insights. The WhatsApp number is zero five five. Two six nine seven nine three nine, and the email address is Wizard TV at Wizard Group dot com. It's a conversation with Standube, and um, the issues are there. We will try as much as possible to you know clear a few more in the next nine minutes, and I can assure you that next week, uh, uh, lawyer lawyer Francis Arthur will be here, and we'll, we'll, we'll continue the the conversation because there, there are lots of issues. Um, this one says that um, good evening, Mister Dobe. If there is a problem with infertility in the marriage for 10 years and all medical tests show that the woman's ovaries cannot bear a child, can the man file for divorce? Yes, it, it, it can be a ground. But look, it, it science can be a ground. is yes. there in today's yeah. medical transformation. But there are options. There are so many options adoption. that you can go for yeah. surrogacy, adoption. You don't need to collapse your marriage if the love if the love is still there. Kwame from Agona says, please, is it always compulsory to compensate a woman if you want to divorce her and, uh, uh, and also under custom marriage? I'll take this question down. We'll tackle it next week so that we can have a lot more time to deal with uh, uh, compensation. Uh, promise from Kumase, I was in a relationship with a lady who cheated and went away. I left her and married. Because of that, she doesn't want me to see my child. Please, what should I do? You go to court for custody. For custody or this. Petition the court. The court for, cu for yeah. custody. Yeah. Okay, uh, we have eight more minutes to the end of the program. Good evening. Please, how long will it take the court to make a final judgment on divorce? You see, this is a very tricky one because um, you are going by a petition and all the rules of engagement. You look at the CI 47, there can be amendments, there can be whatever, it, it could come in. So there is no fixed time, fixed period. That how, how, what has been the longest divorce case you've been on? The longest divorce case I've been on took me four years. To get four. to get the yes. court four court uh, 
for legal, legal vacations. vacations. Yes, to get it through. Yes. If your partner is sent to prison for, let's say, 20 years, won't equity support a dissolution of the marriage on the basis of the natural need for sex? Koshi Badohu. On, the, on, 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 on this one, you just, I will advise that the person... You know, he, he asked the first question, so he has come back with, with better particulars. Uh, yeah, so I will advise the person to go under, come under Section 6. Section 6 of the matrimonial courses at REIT, so six one. So for purposes of Section 21D, the court must be satisfied that a consent for divorce has been given by the respondent. So you go to the prison or you get the gentleman in prison and tell the gentleman that, look, you know I'm young. I mean, I'm in my prime. You are going for 20 years. You are not going to come back. The earliest that I'm going to expect you is like uh, 12 years, mm -hmm. by which time I, I would have gone beyond, beyond my prime. So I will need your consent to file the divorce. Section 6 states that. So if the person consents, if the respondent consents, why the, not? The, you the, just the, walk to court. The go. other questions here yeah, about signing of prenups and um, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, being married for six years, lack of communications. But I, 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 all these questions we are going to tackle. The Michael from Pando, I've seen your your question. We will deal with it. Kweku uh, Apia, Genevieve. Uh, from Accra, uh, I've seen your question as well, and all the other ones. We'll, 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 we'll take those questions. But there was a question I, w I, I said I was going to ask you. Yeah. Now, Section 7 of the, um, um, uh, what do you call it, Matrimonial Causes Act, it talks about failure of parties to live as man and wife. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I mean, why not do man and husband? Why does the law say man and wife? Man and wife. And wife. Why does the law not say failure to live as woman and husband well you see this is the act which is saying that um, which is used as elected to use man and wife and this is 1971 this is not this is not this gender is, friendly this is 1971 the, 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 the law and the drafters of the law are not gender friendly i, I don't understand that position from that's what I'm saying. Why, why why man and wife why not woman and husband well, man and wife is man and wife, per the law. <laughs> and with these laws, you don't, you don't try to think for the frame, framers, framers of, the, of, the, of the law. I mean, I crave your indulgence that we, 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 we talk next week, we take some of the questions, the very practical questions that are coming. We deal with the issue of compensation because the, the, the point about property settlement that you explained, I'm sure that some people really want to get deeper into it to understand what it really means you know what has been acquired together etc and asking for child support asking for custody you know what are the implications what what, what goes with it because i mean for what you are saying if, if you are giving custody it doesn't mean that you alone can decide to do whatever you want to do no, no, you know no, no, with a no. child at the other all. party so, is giving reasonable no, access yeah those are mm. those are some of the things that mm. we, we 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 need to understand i'll, I'll take this uh, this last question from you before i end the show it says please lawyer please lawyer said a legally married couple can divorce without the court if they agree how should the agreement be done did I say they can they can divorce without a court? No, you agree. That's the consent. The consent, yes. Yes. So, so with the consent, the other party just goes to court and file and gets the order. And gets the so order. So at all times you have to go to the court. Okay. So, so you agree. It will, not, it will not be contentious. It will not be contentious. You That's both it. agree that yep. um, let's end this marriage. Yeah. Yep. We agree. So yep. you file and then go and put it so that the court can officially grant the the divorce. That's right. That, 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 so that. but you can't just be at home and say we have divorced. We are not going to court, so we are finished. We are going to, no, no, I'm no, going no, to remarry. No, 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 no. That, 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 that would be problematic. No, no, yes. So practically, you see, in UK today, there is a new divorce law. That is the Divorce, Dissolution and the Separation Act of 2020. I watched a video on that two days ago and I was confused about, so about it all. with this particular one, you do not need to find fault. As yes. soon as one of the spouses petitions the court that this is it this the is marriage the has no, broken no down fault, irretrievably no fault divorce law no fault divorce law divorce law you see you don't need to say that the man has cheated the man has beaten me the man has gone out no 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 in Why fact you as soon as you don't have to say the woman has beaten me why are you saying the man has beaten me well yeah uh, this is this is be gender friendly 
Well, you know, it is the men who, it is the men, you, you know, I used to, I, I used to think that it is the men who always beat uh -huh. their wives until you one practicing. case, one case sent me to Dovsu, where I saw a man badly dealt with by the wife. <laughs> it's not funny. It's not, it's not funny. <laughs> Divorce is certainly not a cause for celebration. It's the end of a marriage. And no matter how bad that marriage was, the fact that it is over is sad. Whatever dreams you and your spouse had for your life together are truncated. It is extremely difficult to abandon a marriage that has produced amazing and probably brilliant children. A marriage that started with zero assets and now owning multiple assets. A marriage that was built on the resolve of love, trust, and honesty. But have you thought about this as well? That you have children who have never seen their parents happy together for the better part of their growing up. All they witness is petty arguments, verbal jabs, unhealthy criticisms, resentments, and probably physical abuse. Remember, your children observe everything you do as parents. And even though most of the time they may not talk about it, your actions have a marked impact on their lives. It can be very frustrating when love is out of reach in a marriage. If you find yourself in a position where you simply cannot find happiness in your marriage, then a divorce may help you to retake control of your life and find a future that works for you. But speak to a lawyer about it first. Divorce should not be seen as a marriage that has failed, but rather a mature decision between two adults in search of a fresh start. This is how I wrap up tonight's edition of Wazo TV Insights, a conversation with Stan Dobe. My guest has been Francis Kwatin Atta, private legal practitioner, my very good friend, my bosom friend, my senior brother, and um, my legal counsel, and uh, the board secretary to the Wazo group of companies. He'll be here again next week Monday at 8 p.m. We'll take your issues, take the questions, discuss the issues further, and enjoy the program. Good night. Embarrassed. Too embarrassed to speak to a loved one. Too embarrassed to speak to your doctor. Too embarrassed when in our lifetime, one in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer. Let me repeat that. One in four black men will be diagnosed with prostate cancer. One in 12 black men will die from prostate cancer disease. One in 12. That could be your dad, even your older brother, uncle, or grandfather. You need to make sure they are not embarrassed to speak to you or their doctor about it. Hey, Dad, have you had your pro-